Hello everybody, Dr. Brian here, board certified specialist internist. Thank you so much for joining me, even as we do a head to toe clinical approach covering the problem of hepato spleno megaly. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, uh, what's keeping you? Huh? Alrighty, so you have encountered a patient who has hepato spleno megaly either in clinic or in the wards. You're wondering what's the diagnostic framework to thinking through the possible etiologies based on your signs and symptoms. Well, the first departure point is to ascertain if the patient has chronic liver disease or if you're thinking about some hematological disorder. This is the diagnostic branch point. So you picked up the hepatosplenomegaly and if the patient has concomitant stigmata of chronic liver disease, spider nevi, jaundice, pericomastia, Testicular atrophy, axillary alopecia. You know those deals right there. Chronic liver disease, guys. The next question to ask yourself, does the patient have ascites or does the patient not have ascites clinically? You know, shifting down as fluid throat. If the patient has ascites together with the of chronic liver disease and hepatosplenomegaly, most likely you're dealing with a situation of, uh, you know, advanced cirrhosis, with or without bacchiari, which is hepatic vein thrombus, with or without hepatoma. Hmm? Does the liver feel craggy and nodular? Is there an overlying hepatic brui? Mm -hmm. Nice to ask. <clears throat> However, if you don't have ascites, but you've got stigmata of chronic liver disease, you've got the hepatosplenomegaly, then you're thinking, okay, <clears throat> is this stable cirrhosis? Is this primarily biliary cholangitis? Right, the nomenclature has changed. Is it hemochromatosis or chronic active hepatitis? Right. But now, if you think the patient has more likely a hematological disorder in that they have a massive splenomegaly crossing the midline, they've got a splenic rub, then your next question to ask is, is there lymphadenopathy or is there no lymphadenopathy? If there's lymphadenopathy, you're thinking this is lymphoma or lymphocytic leukemia. If there's no lymphadenopathy, you're thinking this is more myeloproliferative disorder or non-lymphocytic leukemia. Once again, guys, quick fire. You have a patient with hepatosplenomegaly. You're not sure what's going on. Is there chronic liver disease? If they are staying much of chronic liver disease with SITs, you're thinking about advanced cirrhosis with or without bacchiari, with or without a hepatoma. If you've got chronic liver disease with hepatosplenomegaly but no SITs, then you're thinking about stable cirrhosis, PBC, hemochromatosis, or chronic active hepatitis. However, if you're thinking more along the lines of hematological disorder, we got massive splenomegaly. It's crossing the midline. You can feel that beautiful splenic notch. Then you're thinking, okay, is there lymphadenopathy or no lymphadenopathy? If there's lymphadenopathy, more likely lymphoma, lymphocytic leukemia. If there's no lymphadenopathy, more likely myeloproliferative disease, non-lymphocytic leukemia. Thinking along those lines, right? We've already covered in a previous video how to go about palpating for a large liver. But just to recap, right? This is from taken from Tally. So you start off in the right iliac fossa, ask the patient to breathe in. When you breathe in, the diaphragm pushes the liver down. If it's enlarged, it's going to strike your beautiful index finger. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're going to go progressively upwards from the right iliac fossa, right, uh, as the patient breathes in progressively. Then you want to percuss out the upper border of the liver, which is normally in the fifth interspace, right midclavicular line. And you measure the distance from the upper border to the lower border to get the liver span. A normal liver span is 7 to 12 centimeters. Anything larger than 12 centimeters is hepatomegaly. In terms of the spleen, remember that in kiddies, the spleen enlarges inferiorly, but in adults, it enlarges inferomedially. So you start off in the right iliac fossa, as shown. Let me just get my pen in there. So you start off in the right iliac fossa with your right hand, left hand over the um, left costal margin, right? And you're going to feel progressively superomedially, coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, until you have the left costal margin, or until you can feel that spleen. If you're not sure, what you can do is turn the patient toward you um, in the right lateral decubitus position and you bend the knees and you feel again. If you're still not sure, you can then percuss in trope's space. Now, trope space is the anatomical space, the boundaries of which are the sixth rib superiorly, the left costal margin inferiorly, and laterally is the mid axillary line. So, once again, trope space, superior uh, border is the Sixth rib, inferior border is the left costal margin, mid axillary line is your natural border. If you percuss in that space and it is dull, you can bet your bottom rand or dollar or yen or rupee 
that we're dealing with splenomegaly. This is just showing us the pattern of progressive enlargement of the liver and spleen. Remember we said that the liver comes in, enlarges inferiorly, but in adults the spleen enlarges inferomedially. All right, here causes of hepatic splenomegaly, we've been through this in the first slide, but most likely lymphoma, myeloid proliferative disease, cirrhosis of portal hypertension, or amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, glycogen storage disease, like Hunter's Hurlers and Gauchers and all those friends right there. One of the most beautiful psalms in scripture is Psalm chapter 139, verses 13 through 18. Right, it is beautiful. David makes some very profound statements. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you. Why? Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. If ever you are feeling down or despondent or discouraged, know this, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what? Before you were even born, while you were still in your mother's womb, God knew you, and God loved you then, and God still loves you now. My brother, my sister, my friend, there is not a single person of the approximately 7 billion people on this earth that is exactly like you, and you are precious in God's sight. He loves you. Remember that. Here are my references, guys. I'll see you soon with another helpful video in the Physician Examination Series. God bless you. Thank you.